Good day, everyone. Welcome to class. Today, we are looking at farming system. Objectives. We want to state types of farming system. We want to explain the advantages and disadvantages of the farming systems. Now, the first one we are going to talk about is soil farming. Now, what is soil farming? Farming in which a farmer concentrates on the production of crops or animals on a piece of land. So it's either you are cropping or you are raising animals. Now you can do the two together. That word soul means just one. So it's either you are cropping or you are raising animals. Now let's look at the advantages of soul farming. Number one, cost of production is very low because you are just operating one farming system. Now, no need of technical know-how or special skill. Okay, maybe you just want to be a maize farmer and that is all you are going to do. Or you just want to be a poultry farmer, you don't need a special skill or you don't need a technical um, know-how. Now, disadvantages. Number one, risk of crop failure is high. Now, if you are just a maize farmer and then there's a problem with maize that year, then you are, you are going to in fact, it's going to be a very terrible thing for you as a farmer. Now, farmer cannot generate income throughout the year, yes, because if you are going into farming alone, cropping alone, it's just maize. And when you are done maize, done with a maize season, that will be the end. Okay? So it's a very difficult thing. Now, if you are just a poultry farmer, it is the season you just raise the birds, and when you are done with that, you are going to rest for no income again after the season. Okay, now let's look at the next one. Now the next one is mixed farming. Now what is mixed farming? Farming in which crops are grown and animals are raised on the same piece of land. Okay, now another one says so, just one. Here, mix. Now you have crops and animals together. Okay, you are raising animals and at the same time you are cropping. Now, let's look at the advantages. Generation of income throughout the year. Yes, when you are done cropping, then you can fall back to what? To the animals. Or when you are done with the animals, you can fall back to where? To the crops. Now, animal droppings help to increase soil fertility. Yes, the droppings from the animals, you can bring it down to the farm, and then it can actually help, you know, to increase your um, soil fertility. You don't even need. A chemical fertilizer, we've talked about that before now, you just come with the animal dropping and then you put it there on the farm. Now, crop residues can be used to, you know, to feed the animals, definitely. Now, like the residue, like the shaft and others, you can mix it up and then use it to feed the animals and then the animals in return, we give you their droppings to help the crops to farm. So it's going to be a mutual benefit between the crops and the animals. Okay, these advantages. Now, the initial capital is high, definitely, because you're going to construct animal house or houses, okay, and at the same time, you're going to make sure that the animals does not have access to your crops, because that means you're going to face, you know, your farmland for the animals not to be able to gain access to where you have your crops. That's going to cost a lot. Now, require special skill. Yeah, you have to Get some people to manage the animals and also some people to, to manage the crops. Now, animals can destroy crops. For example, if you allow them to graze and then they face where you have the crops, definitely the animals will destroy your crops. Okay, the next one is pastoral farming. Now, what is pastoral farming? A system whereby a farmer keeps animals alone, just animals. Okay, no crops, just animals. Now we have two types of pastoral farming. We have nomadic farming and then we have ranching. Nomadic farming or nomadic herding and ranching. Now what is nomadic herding? Farmer moves from one place to another in search for what food. Now most of us will see them, some people will do, you know, with their cattle, with their sheep, with their goats, they move round. They move from one place to another. It's called nomadic herding. So the next one is ranching. Here, you face the animals, you provide them with their feet. 
Okay, you don't move them around. They are stationary, okay? And then you come with your seeds and then you feed them. But the nomadic one, they move from one place to another. In fact, some move from one country to another, some move from one state to another. I want to believe you have seen them all around where you are living. Okay, advantages. Now let's look at the advantages of pastoral farming. Animals droppings help to increase soil fertility. Whether um, ranching or nomadic, the, you know, the droppings of the animal will actually help to increase the fertility of the soil. These advantages. We have adequate supply of feed is seasonal for both nomadic and ranching. That's why we're having one or two problems with farmers and herders in our country, you know, because of this problem of inadequate um, supply of feed. Now, another disadvantage, energy meant for production of meat and milk is wasted on trekking, most especially for those ones that work nomadic health. Now, the animals will definitely be tired, and so their rate of reproduction is going to reduce drastically because of the stress of moving from one place to another. So, it's better to, you know, so going to what ranching than nomadic herding. Okay, Tsongia farming. Tsongia farming. Now, what's the meaning of this? Now, it's a system whereby the farmer grows forest seedlings and crops on the same land at the same time. So, the Tsongia farming is done within the forest. Okay, where you have forest trees and at the same time you have your crops. So as you are growing the forest seedlings, you are also growing your crops. Now, let's look at the advantages. Forest trees form canopy and suppress the weeds. Because of the canopy, what's the meaning of canopy? Branches to suppress the weeds. That means the branches will stop the penetration of the sun, and so there will not be photosynthesis for the weeds to grow. All right. Now, decay leaves increasing soil organic matter, OK? Leaves from the trees can help to increase the fertility of the soil and that will help your crops. Now, disadvantages. Canopy of tree can reduce photosynthesis ability of the crops. Not only for wheat, it can also affect your crops. So, Tongia farming system is a system where you have your crops and your forest seedlings together. Now, the next one, shifting cultivation and bush following. Now, this one's the look alike. I want to quickly explain the differences. Now, shifting cultivation is a system whereby the farmer cultivates in land for a period of three to five years, and then when the nutrients, you know, or the nutrients are exhausted, now the land is abandoned by the farmer, and the farmer will not go back to that land again. But what is bush following or land rotation? Here, the, the, the farmer is going to farm for three to five years when the nutrients are exhausted. The farmer will abandon the land for a while for the land to regain its nutrients, but the, land, the farmer will go back to the land again. Here, shifting cultivation, the farmer will not go back, but bush farrowing, the moment the nutrients are, you know, the land has regained the nutrients, the farmer will come back to that land. Please take note of this. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about is lay farming. Now, what is lay farming? Cultivation of food crops and forage crops. Now, what is forage crop? Forage crop. Forage crop, we are, when we are talking about forage crop, we are talking about the, the crops or grasses and legumes that you use to feed your animals. So, as you are planting for your animals, you are planting also for yourself. Okay, it is called lay farming. Now, let's look at the advantages. Leguminous crops help to fix nitrogen into the soil because you are going to plant legumes for your animals to mix with their grasses. And so this will help to fix nitrogen. You don't need any, to apply any nitrogenous fertilizer. Encourages the production of forage crops. Yeah, when we're talking about nomadic herding, earlier on I said, the best one to do to, to operate is the ranching. So by the time you produce forage crops, then you can operate your ranching easily without going into nomadic heading. I want to believe you have gained one or two things from this um, short um, illustration or teaching. I will be expecting your question in your Google class. Thank you for paying attention. Have a great day.